There are many applications in the business world where models of profits and losses are represented by polynomials, and in the physical world where laws of velocity and displacement are defined in terms of polynomials. Therefore, our ability to manipulate these polynomials is very important. In today's episode, we'll perform three simple operations involving polynomials, addition, subtraction, and multiplication by a monomial. When it comes to addition and subtraction, the overriding rule is to combine like terms. Like terms have the same variables and the same powers of those variables, like 3a squared b and negative 5a squared b. If you were adding those two like terms, you would add the coefficients and keep the variables the same. 3a squared b plus negative 5a squared b equals negative 2a squared b. That's what you do when you add polynomials, except that you do more of it. Here are two polynomials, 4x squared plus 7x minus 9 and 3x squared minus 9x plus 15. If these polynomials were to be added, you would often see them set up in parentheses with the plus sign between them. You would then add the like terms, 4x squared plus 3x squared, which is 7x squared, 7x minus 9x, which is negative 2x, and negative 9 plus 15, which is 6. This is called the horizontal method, in which the polynomials appear side by side, written across. This addition could also be done using the vertical method, where the polynomials are set up in columns with the like terms lined up. You now add the columns, much like adding regular numbers, and the result is the same. Subtraction is very much the same, but it has its own particular danger, because now we have to use the, the dreaded, dreaded minus sign. <laughs> Let's go back to our original like terms. We want to subtract these terms, so we'll insert the, the dreaded, dreaded minus, minus sign between the terms and put parentheses around the second term to separate the minus sign from the negative sign. Now, to subtract, we'll change the subtraction problem to addition of the opposite of the second term. Now add the two terms, 3a squared b plus 5a squared b equals 8a squared b. We'll apply that same idea to subtracting polynomials. Here are our two polynomials from before. But since we're subtracting, we insert the, the dreaded, dreaded minus, minus sign. sign. <laughs> we need to add the opposite of the second polynomial. And here's the scary part. That means we need to take the opposite of every term. So we can add the like terms and get our answer. If you do the problem vertically, it is equally important to take the opposite of every term of the second polynomial. Our final operation is multiplying a polynomial by a monomial. This is really an extension of the distributive property, where a number multiplied by a sum is multiplied by each term of the sum. The a on the outside is multiplied by both b and c from the inside. Now, in the case of monomials and polynomials, use the distributive property along with the laws of exponents. Multiply 2x to the third by 5x squared, then by 8x, and finally by negative 4. All right, one more problem that puts it all together. Five times the quantity a cubed plus 4a squared minus 3a minus 2a times the quantity 4a squared minus 5a plus 3. We'll start by multiplying 5 by the first polynomial. But then we have to watch out for the, the dreaded, dreaded minus sign. sign.
very careful as you change the subtraction to addition and take the opposite of 2a. Don't forget to multiply negative 2a by each term of the polynomial. Then add the like terms. Working with polynomials sometimes has a lot of steps, but if you take each problem one piece at a time, use properties and laws you've already learned, and watch out for the dreaded minus sign, you should be successful.